right. Can everyone see the board? Yeah. All right. Hi, everyone. This is the circuit construction workshop hosted by me, Maggie Hong, and the president. Are you recording, Tracy? Yep. Yep. Uh, and the president, Yash Karwal. Karwal. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. So first, before we do everything, circuit safety. All right. So some safety is you do not want to keep your power supply unattended. So in this lab, these will be your power supply for today. But these rules apply for like your actual like when you go in the lab too, right? So try to keep them off if you're not using it. Right. Oh, there you go. Um, another important thing is, let's say if you are wiring your board and then you turn it on and something doesn't work. Um, remember to turn it off before you fix your board because you know you don't want anything to like short circuit or stuff like that. Oh, right there. Okay. Um, everyone is wearing shoes, right? So wear shoes, closed toes. I think in here you'll be fine, but in the lab, definitely uh, wear shoes. Um, keep your station neat. So, you know, try not to have so much stuff on your table to make it like messy. Um, yeah, we're going to be cutting a lot of the wires, maybe, especially the like resistors and stuff. So remember to throw them away. It's in there. I right, forgot. Um, throw away the resistors, like the ex excess, access, ex excess. excess. Yeah, excess. And when sharing it, you know, just all the sharp stuff, like the wire cutters, you know, just be careful with that. Um, oh, one thing that wasn't on here was girls or guys, keep your hair up. So, yeah. All right. So we're going to see what, all right, actually, everyone open your kits. And you know, take out the breadboard part. So these are your pocket breadboards. Wow. Right? So these are the pocket breadboards, meaning that you could put it in your pocket if your pocket is big. No, I'm just kidding. But the pot the breadboard, um, it has like different connections where you can connect like your power. And the all you have to do, if you see these these wires right here, the wires that you guys have. You can easily slot it into these like nut stuff, right? So you can just go like that and like this. And then, oh yeah, everyone, we can put it in easily like this. And then these two ends are, you know, the red and green or not red and green, red and black. <laughs> and those will go to your power supply, right? So yeah. Um, if you use it, you can use, you can bring these in the lab. Uh, I know like in the lab room, they usually have like the huge, big breadboards. Um, but honestly, for like 1101 and 2101, all you need is like this tiny board. So you could do also your digital logic classes. You can use these tiny boards rather than having to hold a huge one. Right. Oh. Oh, All right, so we're going to uh, dive into the breadboard and we're going to watch a, li a little quick video because it's a lot easier for me to show you the video since it's like close up rather than having me like, you know, try to go to the camera and everything. So let's see. I'm a YouTuber, so subscribe to me. Still want to learn how to use a breadboard and understand how they work. So this breadboard is a 100 inch by 10 breadboard. However, there are many different sizes. As you can see here, this breadboard is a really large breadboard. Going back to this small breadboard, it should be enough to demo and understand how to use it. So this is the front side. We can see that there is a plus 
and a minus, minus plus, and then the center piece, which has numbers one to 30 and A to J. Now, this is what the back of the breadboard looks like. So you can see the metal plating on these two and on the side. Now, for double purposes, I'm gonna break these apart. And normally you don't want these exposed. Don't break them apart. So let's talk yeah. about first the easy pieces. As you can see, there is the minus and the plus, and it goes, the line has the like color going all along the side, and the minus has all along the side. If you follow the rail, the plus rail, it goes, the metal piece goes all the way down as well, same with the minus. So these two aren't connected at all. If we use a conductivity test, which is a test that determines whether or not they're, there's a short or if they're connected, the metal pieces are connected, we can use the multimeter and change it to that mode. And if we hear a sound, then they're connected. Let's touch the minus part. If I were to touch anywhere or on, along this, the right or the left rail, you can hear the sound of the beat, meaning that anywhere on the tutorial, it's connected. If I were to put it inside the pin, right, along the whole rail, it should be connected. Similarly, with the, the plus sign, and then inside the pin as well. Right. So if I were to get the minus and the plus connected like this, there shouldn't be any sound because these two are individual and independent. Right. These two power rails are disconnected. Now looking at one of them, the positive side is usually your VCC. Or in the schematic, usually it's the positive positive end. The negative is usually your ground. So to prevent from any confusion, let's stick to that convention where the positive is VCC and the negative is ground. These two rails right here are not connected. In fact, they are individual separate components as why I can take it off. Right. So to connect the two, you want to use them to power different places on the board. Let's connect them using a jumper wire. And all you got to do is just poke the cable through one of the pins. And that would mean, again, that everything on this whole rail on the positive side should be connected to this whole positive rail. Similarly, you want to ground you want to wire the two grounds together as so. It is very important to ground all the grounds. Sometimes you might have two different voltage types, like a 5 volt on this end or a 3.3 volt on this end. But normally, and very importantly, ground must be grounded. Going into the main section of the board, we have a different type of sequence. Now we have everything being horizontal rather than having it vertical. So this center line, this connects in the middle, meaning that if I break this in half, hypothetically, this shouldn't be connected to this at all, right? So connectivity test, these two are not connected. However, these two are, and these two are. Right, just follow the line. Flipping it over, that means I would expect I would expect that this rub, this rail is connected to each other. However, these rail are not. Looking back, you would see that these all have a gap in the middle. If you look closely, it's metal gap, metal gap, metal gap. So that would insist that these two, rail one and maybe rail four, are not connected, nor is rail two, three, five, 
28, etc. And the purpose of this, if I were to connect these back together, is that this enables multiple connections to be put through in the middle. Let's say if I have an IC chip like this, you want every individual pin to be at a specific and different spot. So normally, how they work is you just put it in the center. By putting it in the center, each pin will have its own individual rail. Even if it's the same on the same number, it's a different letter. Right? So that, um, all right. Oh, how do I get out of here? Um, um, Okay. I know. Escape. 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 Okay, guys. Oh, I'm on. Sorry, I'm Where am I? Wait, is it not the same? Oh, sure. Okay, Alright. Alright. So um we're gonna I wanna little do a little like that's for you guys. Oh that's for you guys now. Um so the breadboard, what needs to be connected basically at all times? Ground, right? So ground should be powered, and how do you power the ground with one piece? Yeah, so you just get one cable and you just dump it to the other, okay? Um, another question. Uh, which, if I'm looking at the center one, uh, which two pins are connected? Any two pins are connected? Yeah, so everything on the same row is on the same, like, connected, right? On the same side. All right, we ate. All right, you pass on the multimeters, right? Oh, yeah, okay. <clears throat> all right, cool, cool, cool. Um, all right, I think we can move on to yours. Okay. All right, so in this one, we're going to learn how to use a multimeter. And I'm going to speed it up a little bit because it's kind of long, but. Yeah, I'm going to slow there. Oh, the button but these are the only two videos we'll watch, and then after this, it's all like we're all gonna build circuits together. It's all lab. Yeah. yeah, it's all lab after this. So these are. I'm sorry for all these videos. Okay, we're actually gonna listen to it.
So the polarity matters. The plot positive goes with the uh, what color is that? Red. And yet the black goes with the negative, right? If you do like reverse it, it'll show a negative sign. But sometimes for certain components, they won't let you show the opposite. Oh, oh. oh. okay, I'm just kidding. I thought I cut it out. Oh, 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 hold on, guys. <laughs> oh, 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 okay, hold on. I have a, I'll just, I'll just okay, it I'll in person, okay? Yeah, all right, guys. Let me open up the. Uh, okay. All right, so I'm going to unlock their multimeters and see what they have in there. You will have a multimeter and a few cables, but. You guys already have these cables in your box, so just use these ones. Don't use them with the packets already in there, okay? All right. So. You can if you want. Oh. All right. Okay, I'm, I'm you up can to you, you guys. You can if you want. Yeah. If you already opened it, the wires in the box is fine. You can use those tools. Yeah. It doesn't matter. But I just prefer these ones because it's easier to grip onto the bedboard and to wires and everything. So if you look at your multi here carefully, you'll see that there's three slots. Most common, most multi have three, um, Inputs. You have a 10 max on the left side. You have the V, uh, ohm, milliamp, and a signal sign in the middle. And then you have COM on the rightmost side, okay? COM is your ground. So your black cable, you got a plug right here, black cable, goes into COM, right? For most of the stuff that you're going to be doing, for most like small, low voltage, low current applications, or like any voltage but low current applications, you're going to be using the middle one. BQMA. This will allow you to basically use almost all the functions of the multimeter. The 10 amp is for the 10 amp fuse that's in here. That's for high current up to 10 amps to measure the current. Uh, do not measure any current over 250 millivolts with the middle one, or else you will pop the fuse and then we'll all be sad. All right. So now let's talk about uh, how to measure the voltage, current, and resistance in circuits. Okay. So you can see your dial over there. You will let's go to the left top left corner. You will have the voltage, the V side, you know, V for voltage, and then you will have a you know a solid line and three dotted lines for signal. Yeah. That means that it's DC voltage. All right, that's for most of our applications here. On the top right, you'll see V with the string line, that's DC voltage, that's for your output. Um, we don't need that right now. So DC voltage here. The values from 200M to 500, that is going to be how what the maximum value you'll be reading. It will kind of also set the precision of your volt, your voltmeter. So uh, <clears throat> let's say for your batteries out, I mean, you guys have your, your power supplies, right? That's all only in the output, in the, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, in the output of the power supply, right? You have nine volts on this side, five volts here, and 3.3 volts over here. Of how we desire it to be. So nine volts, five, uh, five volts, and three point three on this side. Now you can measure this output using this. So first, you want to set your uh, your dial to two hundred because two hundred at three thousand m is just two volts. All of our current readings are going to be over two volts, right? So let's do that first. Um, the camera doesn't work, so I gotta do okay. Uh, I'll do it in front of everyone. Okay, next. Your power supply, this switch right here, turn this on, or it on. Okay, and then this switch over here, we'll turn the five volt spot on, you'll see the light, and this one right here will turn the 3.3 volt on and off, right? So let's just measure the bat the voltage across the battery itself. So turn your, if, you can, if you don't even turn it on, you can leave it off for now, but just put your positive and your negative leads onto the screws themselves, and you should be able to read the voltage without shorting it. I turn it on. We'll see or not. Okay, this is this is too thin or too thick. <laughs> so. Or you can clip it like with the alligator clip and kind of clip it on the side. And then see. All right. Okay, 
I just kind of use the algorithm to kind of pack it on there. But then I'm going to put it inside, and you will see a reading about 9.6. Okay, so. yeah. We can use the hard side. All right. That's going to measure the voltage across the battery. So when you measure voltage, you always put it in parallel. If you want to, if you, if you use the wire, you're going, to plug, you're going to plug it into the side over here as well and touch the metal part over here on the sides. Uh, yeah, so voltage, you measure in parallel. Current, you measure in series. We're not going to measure the current across the battery. That will probably pop the fuse. You don't want to do that. And then, hey, everyone measure their voltages on the ladders. You guys want to do more practice, you can go on to the 5 volt bus or uh, 5 volt line over here, put the positive and negative onto that line, and then turn it up. And then turn it on. And then you should be able to read 5 volts. Oh, uh, they just match it. So just read, uh, right? Yeah. 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 About five volts. You gotta pound. When you clap it, you gotta always push it in a little bit, and then you can see the five volts on your computer. Huh? Huh? So, How do you clap it in? Uh, use the. Uh, you can use the. 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 You and then when you read it, when you click on, just kind of push it in a little bit, and you'll see the reading. You can't. A little, <laughs> little dangerous with the uh, battery being that's the only power source that's only low right now. Because when you measure current, you want to put it into series. So you got to break the circuit open and you got to put it in there. Uh, we can't really break the circuit open uh, because, as you can see, everything's not already on. But later on, when you do some testing, you'll be able to do it over there. Okay, okay there you go. <laughs> 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 All right, and then resistance or ohms, right? So. Well, you know, but though, before we start the, about the current, if you look on the right side, this is the A with the line, right? You see 2000 micro and 200 milli, 200 milli and 10. But with the middle one, you can only go up to 200 milli volts or milliamps, right? You always want to start with the highest value for current because you don't know how much current you're going to get. So the thing needs to be safe. You don't try something on the multimeter. Start off with the highest current setting and see what happens. Usually, with multimeters, when there's a value that's higher than what is anticipated, or for current, I believe it's also a little bit lower, it'll show a one. It's in the video, but um, yeah. So, like, if we were to go and put on 200 millivolts, right? And you were to measure the current, or a voltage part, then it will show you a one. That means that the, the voltage is higher than the current uh, position. To go up for and see if they kind of navigate. And if it shows zero, that means either there's low voltage or your voltage is too low compared to the precision required. So if you were to be at like 500 volts, right? Or uh, trying to measure 500 volts, but your actual voltage is like 1 million, right? You can't measure with 500 volts on, on the readings. So precision is way too little. So I'm going to show you a zero, right? All right. And then for resistance or you're gonna use the bottom with the ohm sign or the little little thingy. 
the real big letter. Um, that one you want to do is you turn off the power from the device first, and then you kind of clip it. So we'll do our demonstration with resistors. So they have a resistor. We'll do, we'll do it after. We'll do it after. Okay. So with resistors, you just put across them, and then you put it and figure out using again one if it's too high or higher than your current resistance or zero if it's too low. All right. Does everyone understand how to use a bulky meter? Right. It'll make more sense once you actually have the circuit. Mm -hmm. And this right here is what Cal, like, this is what makes Cal Poly Cal Poly. Because other schools, like the UCs, you might not even touch all this stuff. Right. Oh, for those who do not have the breadboard, you can go on Tinkercad and actually build the breadboard on your computer. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but this is also a really good way to simulate your breadboard. Like, let's say if you have a lab, right? And um, you built on your breadboard, but you're like, oh, like maybe it doesn't work or something. You can put it on the simulation and it'll run. And then if it if you like put too much current, it will actually pop the LED light and it will tell you like a warning, like, oh, too much current or something like that, right? Please don't put too much current on the LEDs. It will blow up on your face. Really? They yeah. The yeah. Yeah, the LEDs. Yeah, the LEDs will too. Yes. Yeah, it'll, it'll pop. The top pops. If you put too much in yeah. 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 Yeah, it'll pop. Oh, oh, I thought we were doing. Okay. So, LED uh, resistors. So, what are resistors? You have seen the resistors in your kits? Wow. Okay. So, they're the blue looking ones, but they could also come in like the yellow one and other colors, but. Um, yeah, they're, oh, they're used, if you came last week, they're used to resist the flow of electricity. So they're like a blocker so that less current goes through or yeah, makes it less current. Um, it's used to, yeah, right there, right? It's not polar, 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 polarized, <laughs> meaning that, you know, the LED light, there's a plus and a minus. Uh, the resistors do not have plus and a minus, so they're, they're friendly. They like everyone. All right. Um, they're used to step down or step up voltage, uh, as explained in last week's le lecture. Oh, and we'll, and we'll do this. We'll do like the step down and when we use the push button, step down, right? Okay. Pull down. Pull. Yeah, pull down. Yeah. Okay, so this is how you measure a resistor, right? Um, can you if you look at this, can you guess how much resistance this this resistor is? If you're colorblind, uh let us know first. Huh. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. So we are excused. So this is how it works is that you read the first color, right? Um and this you how do you know which one is starts first? This last color will always be gold or silver. It's no other color, right? It doesn't even look like gold or silver. Yeah. But so this color, can you guess what this color is? Yellow? Yellow? And, yeah, yellow. yellow? It looks greenish yellow, right? I thought it was green, but it's yellow. It's yellow, so that's four, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh. that's four. Over there, I'll put over there. Okay. Four, what's the second one? Or can you turn one of the lights off? This one. The oh! Right. <laughs> right, what color is this one? Violet. Violet, yeah, so four and then seven. And then third one is what color? Black. Black is zero. And then this color? Brown. <laughs> Yeah. Um, What's four seven? I don't know. How can you tell when this color is like this one green? Um, so it's orange. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> no, no, it's orange. <laughs> <laughs> it's either red or brown. Wait, is it red? It's sort of I wouldn't know. I think it was orange. Oh yeah, wait, why am I asking you? Just um air <laughs> Let's see, let's see, I, I think I think it I think it is it's okay bad. if it's not next and this color is I 
think it's red. Oh, maybe this is red then. This one's red, yeah. Yeah, so this is red and this is red. So what does red mean? Red is times 10 to the 2. Oh, that's crazy. Okay. All right. So what what does that become? What does that become? Four. What is what is wait? What is four? Four. Yeah. Four. Four seven zero times ten to the two. That's them. Oh, cool. So this is four times four seven zero and zero zero. Yeah, forty-seven. So that's the reason. See how difficult it was because we don't even know what the colors are sometimes. You know, like I was, I was trying to match it. And I was like, wait a minute. But so we're gonna teach you guys a way, a better way to measure it, and it's with the multimeters, right? That's trying to use the multimeters. Right. You can, you can turn the light back on. All right. So take any any resistance you want. I'm gonna take a 1K one, or actually I'll do a 10K. Or what? Mm -hmm. we do it. We'll take a 10K or whatever K you want or whatever value you want. Just pick out of the bag and call it a day. So to take it out, all you do is just pull it off from the tape like this. Right. Yeah. Everyone have their resistor. All right. So now we're gonna use these ones, the ones that have the alligator clips on the end, and then I'm gonna put it in my multimeter. Okay. All right. So you guys probably see that the 10K is also on, first of all, the little little sheet you have, right? The opening sheet on it. Uh, if you didn't know, and you just have it on the middle here, first thing you do is turn off the power of your display, right? And you then can just plug in or just use the alligator clips or use the lead, kind of go across the resistor. Doesn't matter either way, polar is bipolar or yeah. Oh, no, correct. Either way, multicolor. Right? And then you put your multimeter down. So let's first say, let's say it's 200. Or let's say it's 200, right? You'll see a one on your multimeter. That means that your current precision is way too low. Your the resistance value is way too, like, a lot higher than what you're trying to see. So we're going to go up to 2000, and it's still way too high. It's still a little one. So we have a 20K. And now we can see about 10K is what it's telling us, right? It's 9 point something using a 20,000 as our precision value. It's probably it's hard to get out 10K. So how you use the ohm meter. Now, if you were to go to 200 mega ohm, you'll see 0 0.09. That's like not very precise, right? So just use that to help you like kind of find the ballpark of what exactly you're measuring. Are we good? All right, so moving on to the next. Where's my mouse? All right. Oh, lab time. All right. Yeah. So, all right, let's. Uh... This is your first basic circuit. So it's a low, simple load. All right. So, from this circuit, we should be able to learn how to use the multimeter really well. Like, so you, you should be a professional with the multimeter. And you should understand how to basically put the breadboard. So if you don't understand this, please let us know because it gets harder after this, right? So everyone take out their 330. Ohm. Wait, did I do? 1K, 1K ohm. 1K ohm. 1K ohm. Wait, where'd you put the breadboard? the 1K, 1K, 1K. Sorry, sorry. All right, so we'll build the first circuit first, right? And then we'll measure and everything. So, 
Once everyone has their 1K, let me know. Right. So first off, we're gonna put the 1K on the side. So <laughs> we're gonna get your, your board. And then we're going to get the male to male. So don't ask me why they're called male to male. And this one is female to female, right? So male to male, female to female, and then female to male. All right. So get your male to male. Any color. Yeah, any color. Uh normally you want to do the convention of black and black and red or black and white. Yeah. So I'm gonna use red and I'm gonna use black, red and black. You don't have screen on the screen. That's your background. Your background? No, I mean, it's it's fine. I can bring it. Uh, this will share it. Oh, I think. I think we should. I think. Yeah. I'll begin. All right, everybody, get your power supply, and then you're going to put the positive into the five. So the five is the top one, right? You're gonna put the red into the positive end or the positive terminal. Um, I would just like try to shove it in, but if not, we have screwdrivers for you to like unscrew. Yeah. You don't have to, when you use the screwdriver, you don't have to unscrew like the whole entire thing. All you need to do is just put like one twist and it should go in. Oh, you said you need one more. Oh, okay. Uh, the top one, and then the positive and the minus. Uh, turn it off. You're not using your Bible as well. There's only any Bible for this one, but there's a picture of two wires. Oh. I do. Yeah. 
the motion to ask them to ask them by things. Yeah, I have a Bro, I thought you were in your car. So, what are you doing? I don't know why I'm not Okay. That was a good Okay, oh, yeah, this is right. Sorry. Yeah, it was not. Uh, sorry, sorry. I thought, I thought you said I think the end. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. I don't have a bit. Okay. Okay. So next up. Oh, Richard. Thank you. Right. What am I thinking? Anyone else have a bit? Huh. Let's see. All right. So next up, we're going to connect both side of the boards together. All right. So I believe you all know how to do that. Connect your positive with your positive and your negative with your negative. And you can use, I'm using like magenta and white. Huh? Yes. Oh, you don't want it? Oh, you don't need to connect it there. Okay. All right, everyone got it? Testing, testing. Okay. All right. Next. Oh, wait. Are we, am I good to move on? Yeah. Next, you're going to get your black and red leads or your positive or minus from your power supply and put it into one of the power rails. So you can choose either the right or the left, whatever fits your your thing. Make sure you know which one is positive and negative from your power to your power rails. All right, here we go. So now what have we created? We have created the five volt like line, right? The power supply, the five volt power supply. Now getting that resistor that you had earlier, there's two ends to it, right? Or am I tripping? Is there two? Yeah, there's two. Or there's two, right? So if I place this, okay, you guys won't be able to see, but if I place it like right there, right, there's one end here and one end on that side, right? So let's put this like where the V1 is, that's positive, right? Where you see the smaller like dash, that's the negative side of the power supply. So the positive side of the power supply is touching one end of the resistor, right? So let's do that on your board. And do not turn on your power supply yet. Okay. All right. So the other end is connected, right? We follow the rail. It's connected to the negative side, right? So what I'm going to do, you could put it directly to the negative rail if you want. Or you can just place it like on one of these terminals, all the other ter terminals, and then you can just jumper it to the negative side using another another wire, right? So by using another wire, I can put the resistor on one of the rail, stick a male jumper wire, and just connect it straight to ground. And I'll walk around and show you. Okay. I just I 
I didn't think they were worth worrying about. So, I'm hoping So, obviously, not today. You think about it. He just tried to do it. So, I think you're very simple. What is the law? I just I saw the military once and then like okay. Also the salary for the military is not pretty it's not very competitive, but it was like some kind of thing. Is everyone good? Maria, do you need help? No, I'm just kidding, I know. Everyone good? Everyone built their board? All right. Now the magic begins where we turn it on and nothing happens because it's a resistor. So all it does is just like resist the flow of current. So nothing crazy happened yet, but this is where we're going to learn to use the multimeter, right? So get your multimeter. Uh, I I use the two like that has the alligator clip, right? But you can use the other one. So how it works is that you can measure your what's it called? Your voltage across the resistor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna so what side is the positive side from the power supply and which side is the negative side from the power supply on the resistor? Positive. Positive. Yeah. And then negative is this one, right? Yeah. So you take your two probes and you put positive, you connect it, you clip it on this side, and then the negative, you clip it on the other side of the resistor. Clip the resistor, right? And then if you don't clip it the right polarity, it'll just give you a minus sign, but not a big deal for resistance or for, right? Turn it on to the the line one, and let me know what you guys get. Hi. How many have we got? Five, right? Five. Okay. Everyone, to get five. Oh. Unless you change your route. Five? 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 Um, so, yeah. 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 Uh, you put it on the other side. Which, which is, you can put this to buy, but not less. Yeah, this is me. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And we know the resistance and we know the voltage that's across swing across the uh the resistor, right? So what do we guess that the current gonna or the current should be about five milliamps? Let's see. So we're looking for I, right? So V divided by R. Uh, what's our B? What do we measure across the resistor? What's the value? Okay, level. And then what's the resistor value? Then we would get five milliamps. Okay, so we're expecting to see five milliamps on our thing. Okay. 
So if you guys already connected the positive side, the negative side is going to be the negative rail, right? So wherever your negative side is, that's what it is. If you want to walk around. Yeah. Always start off with the 200 millimeters. Why? No, what? that's what makes it like. 200, 200 millimeters. Wow. Yeah. Don't, don't try to find flight yet, but make sure you play good as a matter of starting on your setting to be 200 millimeters. Always go for the highest value for the current at first, then see what happens, okay? So turn it to 200 milliamps first. Turn on the circuit. If it's too low, it's just like a light. Make sure you need to be careful. Turn it to the so so do you need help? So, I think it's too late. Yeah, I'm going to Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 
Oh, yeah. You should be. You should present. Like me. Yeah, like, why not? Yeah. Oh, I won't be here next month. Okay. I'm going to be gone. You're going to be gone too? I'm not. I just thought, if you want to continue after the workshops, I'll be on campus. I just won't be in Texas. Oh. Anyway. You good? Mm -hmm. Oh, um, you're never gonna have a soccer move ever again. I don't know. It's probably not. This might be the last workshop. No, I'm just kidding. The last unless they're workshop. It's probably the last one. That's a mixed up. Uh, well, it depends. If we don't have a president, then I think we're I think we're done. I'm working on my Ericsson project on this. Oh, uh, no, 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 um, BJT MOSFET. That's hard. Because, yeah, well, that's why there's tutoring. <laughs> Because this is very basic, you know, everything's basic. Oh, okay. and, oh, we're going to do that one later. Yeah, we're going to do that one later. Okay. So is everyone good yeah. to move on? All right. The circuit. It's kind of boring. Yeah, it's kind of boring. Okay, so we're gonna skip the circuit because it's boring. Unless you want to do like a circuit of series and stuff. Yeah. Well, but actually, you know, Maggie, I think you can show them. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same. Both of will drop. No, no, no. Current is different. It's different. It's different. It's different. It's different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we can do like a million years. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Is anyone ready to move on? So normally I wanted to do this one, but is there? You guys can guess why I put this one. If we're measuring voltage and currents. Why I made this one? Are are the are the the currents the same? Okay, cool, nice. Yeah. All right, so now we're gonna. Oh, you can do this one. Okay, now we're just, these are the LEDs or light emitting diodes. <clears throat> they are basically your best friend in terms of what is going on with your circuit. You know, if there's power there, you can use the LED and see it's on or not. Right. They create light or they generate light using a phenomenon I'm not sure. <laughs> However, so these LEDs are polarized, polarized, because they are diodes, which means that they only let current flow one way and not the opposite way. So you have to make sure that your positive lead is on the positive side and your negative lead is on the negative side. Is it cathode anode? Cathode anode, yes. So cathode is the longer one. Cathode is the cathode is the shorter one. Yeah. So it's not chemistry. So in like in like physics and everything. Right in so the scientific way of electricity is electrons move from negative to positive, right? But in our conventional engineering stuff, electrons flow from positive to negative. So our cathode is actually our negative, even though cathode is positive. Sure. Anyways, <laughs> that's the, yeah. Oh, there you go. Longer lead is positive. Yeah. So the longer lead is positive. You can also check in the actual little inside of the LED itself. You will see a little triangle like. You see right here. Pick up the, the green one. Pick up the green one. You should be able to see it very well. If you look in your green right inside of the LED, you'll see a large triangle and a small triangle. Mm -hmm. Right? The small triangle is your positive or your anode, which is or and then the small the bigger one is your negative. So in case you cut off the least too short and you don't know which is where you're gonna go, either plug it in and see, or better, just look at it and then you can easily tell which one's which. So these LEDs are current dependent devices, which means according to how much current you put in, it will emit that much light. So usually a higher current leads to a higher light production, but there's a limit 
your phase limit is on 20 milliamps. Anything higher, you either lose the life with the LED will burn out faster. It'll burn out really fast for a really high current. And if you put it high enough, it'll explode. So usually you want to keep your uh, LEDs below 20 milliamps for safety and also just to keep your LEDs working for a longer amount of time. And it's so you use resistors after um, LEDs or before it, we kind of lower the current down to about 15, 20 milliamps so that they work and they are pretty long lasting. They use 230 lumens. And if you calculate the V equals IR, five volts, you know, by going through five volts over the 230 ohms, we'll get about 15 milliamps as well. So um, we're going to build a circuit, ignore the 330. We're going to use the one, one K so then we don't have to like rebuild the circuit again. So we're going to use the one K. So everyone get out your LED. Um, choose whatever color you want. Uh, fun fact, each, each one takes like requires more current or less current depending on the color. The red being the least required, right? Red is more. Red is more. Yeah, red red is the darkest. Dark. Because um obviously if it makes sense, you know, the darker the the color, the harder it is to admit, if that makes sense. Like if it's white, then you don't you only need a little bit of current compared to the red because the red is darker. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna use a green one. So how we're gonna work? It's the same idea as the multimeter, right? You break it and then you just put it back inside. So you want the current to flow in the same direction, at, like you want the loop, right? And so again, the longer one is the positive and the shorter one is the negative. So I'm gonna put the positive, which is the longer one, connected to my resistor. And how I like to do it is I like to bend it like this, like it's like, <laughs> you know, so and then like this. So this is the negative, and this is the positive, right? And yeah, like a schematic. You just see this right here, the layer of that diode. The positive is on this side, the negative is on this side. The positive is on this side, the negative is on this side. Yeah. The negative, a uh, good hint is that the negative has the bar. Yeah. Right? The current flows in positive and negative, so positive to negative, the arrow is going down. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the positive to my resistor rail and then my negative and I'm going to put it into the rail of the negative. Okay. You can put the resistor in the front or the back. Okay. So you can you can either put it like here or swap it. It doesn't matter. I think I think I'm going to do I'm sorry, I'm looking at the model. Okay. okay. It's like if you would have like if like instead of a bunch of rocks that slows down the resistance, you just have to be a Wait, what if you go to the Okay. Yeah. So, I think you like to be right. That's why I told you the other one. I don't know. So, try.
Wait, so this is a power to water Oh, yeah, I Okay, so this one was super difficult, right? Um, okay, moving on. I wanted you guys to measure the like resistor and stuff, but I think that's boring. So moving on, we're learning about potentiometers now. All right. Okay. So what a potentiometer is, if you, it's this blue one. Uh, there's, there's six things in here. Uh, three of them are terminals and three of them are potentiometers. Like that one right there, the trim pot. Here we are, trim pot. It, you can like twist it, whatever, whatever. It has three pins on it. Yeah. Yeah. So how a, oh my God, it sounds so like bad. Anyways, how the trim pot, oh my God, how does this work? Oh no, so how the trim pot works is that it is a three pin, a three pin uh like component. And what it is, is it's a adjustable resistor, right? And how can you tell what resistance value it is? So if you look at it, you see the three lines. There's like four sides because it's a square. And there's one with three lines in front of it. On and the end, it, that is the front. So that's where you're supposed to like read it with this, right? In the back, so on the other side, there should be P something something, three, like 103 or 102 or 104, whatever. 104 stands for 100K, 103 stands for 10K, right? So that means that when you're adjusting between the arrow is pointing here, that means that it's zero and then resistance change 100. All right, so it's zero to 100. The arrow can differ depending on how you wire it. However, so it can be out yeah. this way or this way. It just means the maximum value that you can hit is 100k or 50. Yeah. So this is like the most common way to do it. You're going to do one is your VCC, which is your voltage in, right? Two is you're going to be, two is always going to be data pin, which is like, the, signal out. Yeah, your signal out, your value of the resistor. And three could either be ground or the continuation of the circuit. So if you look here, right? If we use the old, that that uh, same circuit, it would be VCC and then ground, and then you can change the data pin, right? So we're gonna, I guess, test this out. Oh, why we use potentiometers? So let's say if you want to, you have a circuit that is changing the frequency, right? By changing the value of the resistor, you can change the speed of the frequency or like how slow it goes and how fast. Uh, we're gonna do, we're actually gonna build that. If we have time, we're gonna build that circuit, but it's kind of complex. Yeah? No, it's like a different, right? 
Oh yeah, like a dimmer. Or a volume knob. Yeah. Oh yeah, like volume. All right. So we're gonna do a dimmer. <laughs> All right. So the reason why we don't have the ground is because in our this application, you don't need it. You're just changing the resistor value of that one and then this one. All right. You're just changing the resistor value. All right. And then uh I forgot a note that if you look at your pin, how do you know which one is one, two, three? One, if you look, so go back to your three pins, right? The three pins. If you look the, like really closely on the left-hand side, you should be able to see the number one. And the right-hand side, you should be able to see the number three. It's very small, right? So let's try to build this. Uh, you can use uh, five volts. Hopefully it lights up. It's kind of very, very low, low power. Oh my goodness. All right, guys, I'm going to don't turn on your power supply yet. I'm going to check it because this, this I don't know if the wiring is kind of difficult to understand because it is three pins. It's not two pins anymore. Yeah, it's different now, right? So. Yeah. All right, it works. All right, I'm walking around. Yeah. 
you guys just go to the Oh, I'll just Oh, I'll just Oh, I'll just Oh, Yeah, 
Okay. All right. So moving on, we're going to learn about switches. So what's a switch? Can anyone tell me what a switch is? Yeah, that thing. That's an on or off, right? So an S, a SPST switch stands for single pull, single throw, which is this one right here. The one with the three pins is really tiny. Okay. And so what it does is it, it's a basically an on and off switch, like you said. Oh, that's it. And there's three pins. So this one is the basic switch you guys see, right? And so there's one, two, three. So if you want your, how you want to wire it is that this is your VCC. The middle one is like where you want like the output to be. And then this is just the third pin. Usually the third pin is left empty because if you switch these two, right? then the, the current is like cut off because this is an open open circuit. So if you want to do an on or off circuit, you just go, you know? So these two is on, and then if you leave this blank, it's off. But the reason why they have the third pin is like, let's say if you want to connect two different circuits, right? You have one circuit here and then one circuit on this side, you can switch between the two circuits. So this is the very, the most easiest switch. Now, the push button. All right, push button. So these are your normal everyday buttons for almost everything you do, right? So press the button, you'll send a signal through. They kind of work in this way that you have four pins. You have two in the front and two in the back. If you look at your push buttons, you'll see that when they extrude out of the actual base, that's going to be your front or back. It doesn't matter either or. But inside of each push button, you have basically a bus line. Heading like from top and bottom, there's like there's this one wire, okay? So if you connect, say, five volts to this right here, you will also be powering whatever is up here, all right? But if you press the button, then you will power these two as well, and vice versa. So whenever you want to connect something to the push button, you also go in a diagonal way or straight down, all right? Most of the time with push buttons, or the switches also switches too, you want to use a pull down resistor to kind of ground whatever signal you're doing. So let's say I want to send a five volt signal when I press the button, right? But I'm going to send a, like a zero signal when I'm not pressing the button. So that's this bus line right here. If you don't ground a signal over here, so you just have, you know, this be floating in the air, it doesn't know whether it's actually fully ground or some in, in the air, there could be some static charge that could change the value. It's kind of floating in the air. So you use that one kilo ohm resistor or so down here on the ground. So make sure that you are going to ground, but you're not consuming too much current though. Does that make sense? So knowing, so you get your, your push button, right? There, it looks, you know, it's either, oh my God, this is like so tiny. So it has like a legs like this, right? So how would you put this on the breadboard? I like to normally put it in the center. Remember how I showed you guys the IC chip? I put the two long ones, so it should be like, like this. Right? So it should be like horizontal. And I, push, I put the push button on the center of the push button, or of the breadboard, right? So I would put it like sideways, put it in the middle. It might be a little hard to open, but you can just open it up and switch. Um, yeah. I don't 
Oh, so the current so path. Yeah. 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 So, I see. So, it's like a base, right? And the base is your own. Yeah. 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 Allowing the current to go to it like this. Okay, like when you close it, go BCC to the resistor LED to ramp. You've got 
So it is a So you actually All right. So for those who uh, oh, for those who uh, did the push button, how do we feel? Was it hard? I was it confusing? Yeah, I don't I don't like the push button. <laughs> but now we're gonna try to build a circuit using so this is you could consider this a push button, but in the schematic, like for lab, usually it looks like this of a push button. It looks like Huh? And so that one's a switch, which is the other, the, the pulley switch, right? But I mean, it's not like the same thing. So how it works, you're going to get the small one. Where is it? Oh, where is it? Right here, the small one, the one with the three pins. And you're just going to connect um, the first two, right? And then you just, the first two will be this one and this one. And you just leave the third one. Right. If you want, you can place the third to ground as well. Yeah, that works too. You can put the third one to ground. Yeah. Whichever you want. Extra credit if you do this one. Extra, extra uh, credit. <laughs> extra, extra credit if you get the slice uh, yeah. and the point. Yeah. Yes. Huh? Oh, extra, extra, extra credit. You don't even have to break your push button apart. So uh, a cool thing you could do is you could do the the switchy slide connected to your push button circuit. So you but have two like inputs. If you make sure your switch right here on, it's on. Yeah. You put the button. It's like exactly. it's like your phone. What is it like that? Um, it's like um, like your computer, right? Yeah. Or like um, a rocket. A rocket? Yeah. You gotta turn the safety off and then press the button to ignite the rocket. Sure, whatever he said. Basically, two factor authentication. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Exactly that's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Or or oh I got it. It's like your car. Your your the switch is your you turn in your key, right? So you turn it on, and then the button is your like AC. Because if you don't turn your your car on, you can't okay. Back to the car analogy, okay. You you switch your key ignition, right? But then your button is your gas pedal or your drive load, you know. No, that works too. Okay. Okay. The, the, you have chain, right? Oh, yeah, you do. You do. Oh. oh, I have chain. I'm okay. Uh, you have chain, right? Does uh, anyone need help? How much, how much do you have? 20, 20. Yeah, wait. What happened with four bills? Uh, someone else hit me with first money, so you have to move the board. Uh, 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 really anyone have change? Uh, wait, who has chain? Uh, uh, Jason, you have chain? Yeah. Oh, I'll pay, I'll pay. I'll pay. I'll see you next tour. I'll pay the robotic club too. Uh, I I don't I don't go to the robotic uh payment club. Oh, we have we have changed that I guess. Oh, okay. Who's like giving us the tab? Yeah. All right. Anyway, who needs help? Here, wait. I have a ten. So I know. I have right. this and five. the ones. Okay. Oh, really? <laughs> Oh my gosh. What? Are they saying? Well, yeah, why is it $16? Like, I don't know. You know, because that used to be actually price. So we were actually actually believed. Uh, but then it actually doesn't do that anymore. So is it free? What? Is it free? What? Is it free? Why do you want to do No, it actually doesn't do that anymore. Like, there's no like studio version. Something happened to ask you actually. Well, I can wait yet with 32 now. I think that was like a top price um, previous year. So now, like, $52. Yeah, so there's no problem. I'm so close. I'm so close, right? Wait, probably in the middle. Oh, Oh, 
So this is the inside of it. So you put signal through here, it'll go straight out the side. That's true. I think she so went. She this right here is the button. Uh, the press the button. Uh, button. Uh, button. Uh, button. Uh, button. Uh, button. Uh, I forget. So if I say plus five, volts, right? And this one will be always. Uh, uh, yeah, wait, this always. always. But when I press the button, show on the then it will go this way. And this way. All right. The same way with the other side. So when you want to wire anything, Go diagonally. It's working. See, I I don't so are you is that your panel or is it you gonna work with I don't know, is it like you have one like all you look at all the um uh is it does it bounce out or is it the one outside of the series, they have internal uh, 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 This is my theory right here. Oh, this one is going to be up right here, and then all when it's like like this, right? So when so like you can look at this one, it doesn't take off. Right here, you have one resistor and two LEDs yeah. because they're in series. <laughs> but this one here works because the resistor is out, out here, and it has to the current has to go to the resistor first before it goes through all of these. So this is fine as well. But if you put the resistor over here, you have to put one for every one of them, because then you might short off the other ones. Okay, this is the thing you're talking. Oh, I think it's the thing you're talking. Wait, as long as it works, we want. Okay, it doesn't matter. It looks like it's going to break your nose. Yeah, it's a good reason. I don't know. I don't really know. It's so fine. Maybe you just play hard, too. Oh, my God. How would have I done? Yeah. Like, don't mind my original one. Like, what are you doing? Why do you do that? How are you for? Here. 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 Um, it's either. 
Yeah, you can put so like Okay, one or both. Okay, one or both. This one, 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 Oh, okay. so this one's going to be like, oh, okay. So this one's going to be like, oh, okay. No, no, you have it right. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's the current that I have. Because each of these bikes, they get into the current. Yes. Right. And if I move it higher, it's like, it's a lot more current. So you get to read those. The lower the current, the reason is lower. So we can take it out. So it's kind of in order. And then the other one is in order. So these are kind of in order. Start with it. And then you have to put it out. Next slide. Door on one. Yeah, we can do it. We can do it. Yeah, I got a sorry. I had a little bit of this. Just like this. Yeah. Hey, should I have come to one? Did you? Did you? Uh, did you? Um, but you came to the water. Really, really and then, I used it for temperatures and stuff. What was the previous yeah, temperature thing? Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, this one here? Yeah, yeah, no, no. Is to cut the wire length to a red thread. So the, the register, like, so it's really long. I see. And you're never going to post one ever again? I don't think so. Why not? Because I need to do my airspace. No. Because no. no. yeah. of what? It was nice. No. Are you? 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 Are uh, you know, I guess become famous so that one day I can see me on the billboards. Like, please, Josh, this is why I need to Please, Josh, please. If you come to your side, I will have to pick it up. Yeah, yeah. You'll see me. I hope so. I hope so. Take care. Oh, no So what I said about Eric earlier was 
Did anyone blow their LEDs? I can give you mine. Touch the touching circuit. Like the passive touch. No, the okay. touching. No, I'm just kidding. But so what it's gonna do? We're gonna learn a new component today, which is the two n two 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 transistor. Right. So this is like a very basic BJT, and BJT stands for something. Look it up on Google. I don't know. <laughs> it's bipolar. Bi bipolar. Bipolar. Bipolar junction transistor. I I I use MOSFETs more, but whatever. Anyways, so how it works is the current. What what do we just what do we just use? Like well, whatever you guys have. Huh. Um, it's a, we use the switch and the push button. We use the switch and the push button, right? And that manually needs us to like move it or click on it, right? So the PNP, NPN transistor, what it does is it's an electronic switch. So let's say if you have a, you guys all know what a, not a sine wave, a square wave. So it looks like this. 
right? A square wave. So when it's right here, this is five volts. And when it's right here, it's zero volts, right? So zero to five, zero to five, whatever, five to zero, right? So if I were to put a like a square wave into the base right here, this is this base is your like activator. So if there is five volts in here, then current will flow from here to here. If there's zero in here, then current, this will be open, right? So the switch is not on. The switch is on when this is five volts or a high voltage, right? So that's the data sheet. You guys wanna look over it. So today we will use it as an electronic switch, but it could be used as an amplifier. So that's what you would do in your microelectronics class where you amplify the like current in or the voltage in from like five volts to like 10 volts. So it's used in a, as an amplifier, but we will just use it as a switch today. Um. Oh, one more thing. There's the difference between analog and digital. Digital uses it as a switch. Analog uses it as an amplifier. Oh yeah, most basic one. And there's three terminals, right? So like I said, the base control is basically the reason, like the controller. All right, so we're gonna build this circuit. It's a little difficult, er, but uh, it's a really cool circuit. What is, you're gonna do is that you're gonna build this, whatever, right? And you're gonna touch that base. Once you touch it, your base with your fingers, it should turn on the LED light. And hopefully it works because we only have five volts, but okay. we might have to switch the nine volts on this one. Yeah? Yeah, so we don't have a 30K, right? So how will we make 30K from what we have? Yeah. But how? In parallel or in series? <laughs> yeah. All right. And your two and two, 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 two is these ones right here. And to read the data sheet, it's very important. Admitter and collector are two different things, right? Um, so when you look at it, when you look at your transistor, face the flat side facing you and read it like that, right? So emitter, if I'm facing, if the flat side is facing me, the emitter is this one and collector is this one. The base is always the center one, all right? Uh, let us know you have a little difficulty building the circuit. It's a lot diff like different from the other it's circuits. It's only one, two, three, four, five, five components, right? Shouldn't be too hard, right guys? Yeah, I got this. Yeah. It'll be here. Yeah, yeah. 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 Ye
No, no, I'm saying like the next thing we did, I was like, I want to sit down and like, be able to work with those artists because yeah. I can plug in. Oh. So that they can actually help out here. <laughs> I'm guessing. Sure. Uh, next time, what do you do? Oh, and try to use these resistor values because um these are proven to work, right? Sure. All right, let me let me put wait like five minutes to get All right. Speed speed run. Speed run. Whoever gets it first. Extra credit for whoever extra credit whoever what? Wait <laughs> Yeah, uh, one dollar discount. Yeah, it's going to be Yeah, yeah, maybe what we can do some stuff. Cool. Yeah. Um, hold on. Oh, yeah, he wanted us to have like a VR incorporation to which he could buy. So, um, yeah, I think it's going to be indoors with screens. So there's going to be like, we're going through the actual ride is going to be how a works on that. So it's going to be air, temperature, water, water, earth, and we have the classic part anyways. So then the classic part will be like the final fight where it goes in for like screen. Oh, yeah. So then, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. That's okay. Oh, die. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and then like all right, I'm gonna teach you guys something real quick. So these wire, these resistors are hella long, right? Super long. So this is when this comes in. This piece. What you're gonna do is you're going to face it the way where it's a CPP, and then you're gonna get your resistor and put it in the top one like this and bend it. So then it goes like that. Right, so it goes through like this, and then you use your wire clippers and you cut it. So it makes a perfect size for your resist on your bread board. So that's what these are for. Okay, right. all right, go back to racing. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. Are you, do you have a yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So these, these two are okay. They're connected horizontally. You just put it in the start here. Wait, how do you think she's going to Uh, uh, yeah, no, so you can go to there's no, you can get to that. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. So, if we have very terrible, we can go on. But if we help, you're going to change the one. We can go to the last for help, yes. All right. All right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Oh, I should probably explain what the circuit does, huh? Okay, okay. So I'll explain how the circuit works. So first, okay, do you guys want to deal with Q1 first or Q2? Q1, Q1. Q1. So Q1, right, let me write on the board actually. I'm gonna I'm gonna use dictatorship no, I think I'm win. and go on Q2 first. So let, let's look at only at Q2, all right? So let's pretend that this is not here for now. Right? So when this is zero, zero volts. You have nine volts going into here, into the LED, right? And then you go through this um, this transistor. To turn on this transistor, this has to be five volts, right? So you're gonna put five volts here. And when five volts goes here, then it will allow current to go through like that. It closes, the circuit closes, okay? And the reason why we have this circuit, so now we do this. It's for safety purposes, right? If you connect this one right into here, first of all, that means that there is no like power or voltage going in here, right? There's nothing driving this. If that makes sense. So if I touch it, there's nothing driving the five volts, there's nothing driving it. So by touching here, you're actually opening the circuit so then five volts would go into here. If that makes sense? Because if you're just touching this, all you're doing is you're just touching it. You're not putting five volts in here, right? Your body doesn't have five volts to turn it on. So with this circuit, Right, it's connect right here. This is oh well, sorry. Let me say it's five. This is five volts right here, right? The same as going through here and here, five volts. So once you touch this, it opens the circuit, sending five volts into here, turning this on. So this was zero before, then it comes to five volts, and then yeah. Mm -hmm. So if that transistor needs five volts turn on. How come the other one should not five volts to the transistor? So put the extra put the extra resistance in that. Okay. This resistance is here to plug it like straight to the map. Okay. Like it doesn't have enough, I guess, like power to to directly send it here. So even if this is like a little bit open, you're still sending five volts in here, you know? Rather than this one, if you don't put like one, the number one, which is like five volts. Then it won't open. Okay. Yeah. Well, what? Yeah. 
Like again, the resistance and capacities of your human body, you have some more you know, yeah. small amount. But it's not enough. It's not enough to turn on the LED, okay. but it's enough for it's like you amplify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you amplify. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, so you mean at the no, you have to turn that one on to allow my to and then the center one is your touch, right? And then the latter one, I believe the latter one. So this one goes into the base. So now you need to go in okay. here. We don't have to. 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 We don't have Oh, okay. Activate Make sure everything works, you know what I mean? 
I'm not sure I'm 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 I just got an email saying you don't have an advisor right now. I'm like, oh, I didn't think about it. But it's like, you know, like, oh, great, great. I'm glad you're all here. It's like pass for a second, right? Uh, when you put in the like, audit, see if there is any like different. Yeah, that's it. That's it. First, make sure your circuit oh. works. Okay, now. What is the Get it to work. It's like weird. Like, like I think you do it. Yeah, for the positive. So basically, you do a positive wire, and then the other wire, you use your other wire. Yeah, the other wire. Uh, yeah. Are you trying to? I'm trying to figure out why you're going to win. So. Wait, wait, so you said, you said my body, so it's positive, so positive, and then you keep up to the you, You're acting as a resistance. Yeah. So the current right now is about like now the point they would be Oh, okay. So, 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 so
Also, it was all that bad. I was like, I don't know what it is. I kind of, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't know. It, but I think it was anyway, uh, this is a bit of a Oh, that's five. Oh, okay. So, do you guys want to make it work better? Because we, uh, we don't really supply enough for, for voltage, unless you're static electricity. Just plug it over to grab as you power, right? So then you have power, and then you have you know your touch sensor, right? So when you, when you touch between these two, turn the on, as because you're the conductor, because you have resistance as well. So power. So that way you're specifically you're, you're the bridge. That's how it happens. But there's no reference really. And then you're, you're not talking to yourself, don't worry. What? You have to like, look at yourself. Oh, yeah, no, no. Oh, but I use one less than this. Okay. So, yeah, no, okay, didn't. Oh, it's, a, it's an online circuit. It's a circuit from online. The circuit from online. Oh, okay, okay. Sample circuit. So it's 9 volts, not 5 volts. But usually with test sensors, you want to have some kind of like power because we, we can't deliver our cell power. Unless we go on a you know we go on a rug with socks on, get a little static energy to discharge it all at once. So you'll see it light up for like a split. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you also shock everything else because you have high current. And you have a you send like a bunch of like you don't even know how much. I feel like it's, you know, it's whatever. Oh, yeah. Maggie. It works with the yeah, yeah, you have it. Huh? I'm pretty sure it's not the Oh, yeah, it works. Oh, yeah, it's for everyone. I finished. Yeah, I just need the power. You finished? Yeah. You need the power from the cookie? I get that. That's how I'm really sticking. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah.
Line, then go with this one, make the circuit, and then ground it down. Kind of like if you my okay. phone is not here, um, this one is not short circuiting, so you would try your LED, like LED you have. Maybe it's a problem with the LED. I'm going Oh, okay. 
So there, this is the last circuit, and I'm not going to tell you what it does, but I want you guys to try it out if you have time. It's a little harder. It uses LED, resistor, switch, and capacitor, and a... We'll send this. We'll send this out. So you guys can... You guys don't even have to take a picture of it. Yeah. Oh. DM us on this. DM him. What? This is going to... The video um will be on YouTube and on our website and the PowerPoint will be on our website um at some point this weekend. Yeah. And uh we're going to it. 
this, I built this in 2300, which is digital logic. Um, this, uh, yeah, you, you built this, but it's like kind of, it's a lot cooler. Um, this circuit is a, just a cool, fun circuit that I thought of ish. And then these are just basic like on and off switches, but yeah, this one you will make in the class, but you know, you can be ahead. You be ahead, right? And then the extra ahead, my blink order two kit. <laughs> oh, that's way too ahead. That's, you have to know logic. Oh, uh, logic gates are yeah, deep in the box. <laughs> Any questions or concerns? Getting to over diodes possibly. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, well, that was supposed to be with the thingy, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff in this kit that you will you will use for classes or for your own personal project. So I definitely hope you guys felt that you spent your 16 bucks in good hands. And hopefully you learned a lot. Everything but the multimeter and the wire cutters are going to keep. Oh yeah, please return. Please put the multimeters back into the box and I think I see one of the like, uh, oh, the gas oh, he took it? Yeah. No, no. I said, no, he's a multi meter, but you don't have that. You price $60 for the multi meter. Oh, six. No, I think more than that. I know that. Well, you can make an announcement. Yeah. See, it's pretty accurate. Well, let's see how many do they have to start with. You know, with box hole. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. Well, um, the next workshop is graphic design, I think. Yeah, graphic design. Um, so you learn how to graphic design because apparently people tell us that engineers don't know how to make presentations and nice, nice PowerPoint. So. Yeah, please bring up the multimeter. Yeah, so it's about to be a college. I think you would have put a 
Call them and then by the time I think this should be ready. Yeah, I so bad. Yeah. You know what's funny? 